Welcome, everybody. My name's Gary McGowan, and I am so happy that you decided to join me this afternoon and talk about Realm. What is the big deal with Realm? Why is it happening? What is going on? And uh, we're going to touch on, we're going to look at the app. I'm going to launch the app from the desktop. Also, we're going to look at the mobile app, too, which I really, really, really love. And and we're going to cover all those types of things. We're going to cover, you know, how to look up listings, how to search for specific things, how to look up your favorite workflows. And I got to tell you, if you're just jumping on now uh, and if you want to get into the chat, all you have to do is click on YouTube and watch our video through YouTube. And then you can then you can go on and provide comments there and I'll see the comments. And, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to ask them or answer them. If you're watching this on the replay, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions as well. But uh, the first question we can probably talk about or the elephant in the room is why is this happening? Why has uh, Trev decided to change from uh, Stratus that we've been using for about eight or nine years, uh, what's going on? Well, the, the change and the reason is we need to move forward uh, based on a number of different things. And I remember, I remember uh, when we changed to Stratus or the version of Stratus that we're using now, I remember those days. I remember a lot of the agents that kind of were, were stuck in their ways that, oh man, I cannot believe we have to learn a new system. How am I going to learn a new system? I will never be able to learn this new system. Eight, nine years later, we've, we've already forgotten about it. In fact, it didn't take too long to forget about the system. I don't know if you've been around long enough. Those yellow screens and everything like that, they were pretty awful would come to think of it. But we didn't know any better. And that's kind of what Realm is. We don't know any better. And, and Realm is going to provide us with so much, uh, so many more tools that we will have at our fingertips and more, uh, more importantly, that our clients will have. Uh, this is a reason why we need to change. I, I know... Um, a little bit about me, in fact, um, I started my business many, many years ago at KW and have, you know, worked in different and wore, have worn different hats, uh, been the general manager of about nine or 10 different offices and have coached many, many agents, whether they're brand new or very, very successful top agents. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about just for a minute before we look at the system. And here's what I know about top, top agents. They are quick to adapt. They are quick to be the early adopters. And that's my challenge to you today is become the early adopter. And, and I know, I know it's tough to learn new software. However, once you figure out and become familiar with your favorite ways to look things up, I call them workflows, uh, within what you're doing right now in Stratus. And now you can do that in, in realm you will become very comfortable with it. And that's my goal for you today is that you become very comfortable with it. And, and let's circle back to why is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, I can tell you this. I'm going to hold up here an iPhone 4. This was probably one of the best tech devices I had ever owned in my life up to that point. It came out, I think, maybe... 13 or 14 years ago, I can't remember. And this iPhone was amazing. Apple just created this really great device. And if you kind of uh, stay with me on, on this analogy in the fact that you would probably agree with me that it changed the way we do business, right? This iPhone 4, this silly old iPhone 4, it changed the way we do business. Well, if it was so good, if it was so good, why did Apple now just launch a few months ago the iPhone 14 Max Pro? That's what I'm using here. Why? Because we could not get any more usage or create a faster system or create any more data into this iPhone 4. They had they had to move to something more sophisticated. And that, that my friends, that is what Realm is. Realm is going from you know, the old Stratus system to now an iPhone 14 and beyond. In fact, we cannot build Stratus any more powerful and we cannot add any more elements to it. We can't add any more features to it like we can with Realm. And that's one of the major reasons why we need to adapt and move forward and be that early adopter of Realm because of the amount of great information and tools it's going to give us as realtors. 
uh, it's going to provide that same service level and better to our clients. And our clients are going to, in fact, the ones that my clients that are using Realm right now, they absolutely love it. We're going to look at the mobile app and within the mobile app, your clients, when they're logged into it, can now see all the sold data and everything that goes around that. And I know what you're saying. You might be saying, well, there's already other third-party apps or other brokerage apps out there that can do that. That's fine. I don't want my clients going to another brokerage to look at the data. I want them staying with mine. You know what I mean? So we're, we're going to look at all that. And, and it's important that we jump in we learn how to become familiar with our favorite ways we look things up. You'll, you'll see here in just a moment, if you haven't already logged in, that there are different things to look up. You'll also learn along the ways, um, the way I do something might not be the same way you do something if you're already logged into Realm. And that's okay because the cool thing with Realm is there's many ways to do the to the same task or to get the same feature, the function out, the same data out. Uh, there's many different ways to do that. So that's good. That's good because everyone does things a little bit differently. But what I can tell you, and for the for the for the hundreds and hundreds of agents that I've already coached on Realm, uh, they love it once I once again once they understand that it's a little bit different than Stratus and how they do their their favorite searches or things like that in Stratus, and now they can do that in Realm. They love it. They love it. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, I'm going to log in from the desktop version, and just know everything that I do from the desktop per version, I mean absolutely everything that I do from the desktop version, you can do from the mobile version. And we'll look at the mobile version uh, towards the end of the uh, the webinar here. But everything that I can possibly do from the desktop, you got it. I can do from the mobile version. So that's, that's, that's amazing. All right. First things that we're going to do is I'm going to share the URL and take a snapshot of this, take a picture of this. You can log directly into realm uh, using this URL. And I'm just going to share my screen here and uh, let's just move this video uh, out of the way a little bit. Um, that's okay. I'll be covered. Uh, use that URL, take a picture of that and you don't need to log into any other system beforehand. You can do that right here. Now, let's remove that. And once you're at this site, this is the same site that if you sent a client to that they would log in. And that is now becoming uh, more familiar with both you and the client. It's the same. It'll, it'll look the same. And of course, when we log in, we get all the brokerage or the broker related features. And the way I log in here, I'm just going to start entering my Treb user ID. And once I have that in, you'll notice that it's now asking for the pin code, which is the same pin code that you use to log into Stratus. And then of course your authenticator uh, password that I'm just going to look up right here. So, and I'm going to log right into uh, the system live long as I get this number in fast enough. There we go. Perfect. And it's logging me right in. Now here's what, no, it's not. I did, I did, I didn't do it fast enough. That's okay. Nine, five, five, zero, seven, seven, three, zero, eight, three, three, five, nine. The cool thing about the mobile app as the system's logging, there we go. The system's logging in. I'm going to talk to you a little, uh, a little quick about the mobile app. What I love about the mobile app, and, and we'll talk about this in just a moment, is we've all been there before where a client asks, you know, for some information of a property. They send you an MLS number and you're sitting there it's in the evening, perhaps you got your favorite game on or your favorite TV show, whatever that might be. And you're just kind of, oh, I've now finally get to relax. And then you see the text from the client and can it wait till the morning? Perhaps it can. Sometimes it can't, especially in a market where we're moving as fast as we are right now. Uh, we need to get that information to our clients right away. What I love about the mobile app, and we'll see it in just a few moments here, is like I said, it has all the same data from the desktop version. I also, it also uses the biometrics, which means as long as I've logged in once, and I believe it's once per month, I either use my thumbprint if I'm on Android or if you're on an iPhone like me, it takes, it does this 
the, the beautiful face and it will log me in by face ID and I don't have to type any, any passwords in or anything like that. And I can text the listing to my client. We're going to see what that looks like. And it's phenomenal. And what I love about all the listings that we send to our clients and your client doesn't have to be registered with the system in order to see a listing. Uh, it's all branded to you. And we're going to look at that, whether it's through text or whether it's through email, it's all branded to you, uh, their agent, which is great. Okay. So let's look at the desktop version and <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Moving, uh, moving at the top and we're going to move left to right, uh, along the top. And then we'll see, we'll, we'll go through some of these columns here and I'll explain what they are. We have a couple of ways to always get back to the home screen. And this is, this dashboard is considered our home screen. So you can click a couple of things here. You can click the realm uh, logo. That'll bring you always back to the home screen. Or if you move all the way to the right hand side of the screen, there's the home button as well. You click that, that'll bring you back to the home screen. So those are two ways to get back here. Now there's a few different ways to search or to use the search functions within Realm. And the first way here is, if I have a specific MLS number that I know, I'm gonna input it into here. That is the fastest way to do it. And I, I just need to start typing uh, the MLS number. And once I get four or five numbers in, it starts bringing up the listings associated with that with that MLS number and I just choose the appropriate one and I just highlight it, click it. And we'll do that. We'll look at a listing in just a moment because there are a few things uh, that show up in a different spot than what we're used to uh, within realm as compared to where they would be found in Stratus. Uh, I can click on uh, this search button right here. That'll take me into the, the same search criteria uh, saved. We'll see that in a moment. That's where if I've had any saved listings or liked listings or searches, that's where that's going to be. We'll look at all that. Contacts, of course, that's self-explanatory. We'll look in, we'll look at that. That's where I can add uh, the neat thing in contacts. If I click that, the neat thing with contacts is I can input a contact and I have a, a handful of um of contacts in here that I use for testing purposes. And I can put them in here if I click this blue button uh, one by one, which is I can add a new contact one by one. You know, when you when you do that, uh, maybe some maybe you met somebody today at the coffee shop and they wanted they want to get on a drip, and that's how you would do that. The other cool thing is I can now export my contacts. We won't get into that today. I can export my contacts from Treb Stratus download them to my computer and import them here into realm, which is fantastic. Now, what I will tell you is it won't migrate their drips or their searches from Treb Stratus into realm. You need to go. And if you just have a few of them, it's pretty easy. You need to go recreate those searches or those drips, uh, right within the realm program and then associate or tag them, uh, to the individual client. Okay, so that's the clients. I, I'm not going to dive deep onto the clients, but I like that we can add uh, clients uh, one by one or import. And of course, we could export clients here too, which is cool as well. And uh, the system does allow us to store documents in here. Uh, this is not a service or a feature that I typically use because of all the other systems that we have at our fingertips, uh, whether you're using uh, the new SkySlope program or of course, um, AuthentiSign is where I would keep documents as well. And let's just go back to our home screen here, the dashboard that is. And the one thing that you'll notice uh, right over here is this little speech or the bubble, the text bubble. And that's if I were to click that, it shows red for me because that's where I'm having some engagement with uh, perhaps clients. I can text clients back in through here and I perhaps have an unread uh, message in here as well. And that's where I can send messages uh, back and forth to clients. It'll show up if they have downloaded the app from the Apple store or the Google store. Uh, that's where they will see those messages. And of course, it's, it's just nice to keep it all contained in one location. I always say this is as, as a realtor, um, message and talk to your clients that they want to be 
they that they want to receive the information. You got to ask them, how do you want to how do you want to receive the messages? How do you want me to message back and forth, communicate with you? And some people want you to pick up the phone. Other people want only email and other people are like, yeah, I'm good with WhatsApp. I'm good with, um, you, you know, your your iMessage or your messaging app, whatever that is, stick to that. I find that's the best way for you uh, to communicate and serve your clients for sure. Um, and of course, there's moving right along. If we have the home button over here. That'll always bring us back to the, the to the home page, and then the last uh, button before we get into the setting up the profile is the dice. I uh, click on the dice. This is where all those shortcuts that perhaps you're familiar with, and Stratus, they're all here within Realm. And there's a few of these that we'll click on, uh, but in your own time, perhaps look at them. These are all the same shortcuts you would find within uh, Stratus. They're all here. And there's a few that we're gonna click on today, like the land registry search, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we'll even click on the sold stats. We won't spend a, a tremendous amount of time in stats, but I do wanna show you uh, the stats because the stats in Realm, are outstanding. And especially if you're not familiar with how to retrieve or how to look up stats, uh, it's really, really intuitive and, and it's really, really good. So there's, there's, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that. And then the far right where you see my image, uh, uh, that could be your initials. When you log in, it might just have your initials. That is your profile. And spend some time at the beginning with your profile. So if I click that, I want to edit my profile and I want to do a couple of things because this is the information that when you send and when, when you share uh, listings with your clients, uh, this is the information that they're going to see. So the first thing that I like to do is make sure all my Contact information is correct. Of course, is it the correct email address? Is it the correct address for where my office is located? And I can go and add in some of my own uh, socials you can see here or my URL that I want clients to see. And most importantly, I find is upload your picture. Definitely upload your picture because when we share a listing, you'll see why that's so important. Uh, from a branding perspective. So that's on, that's on my profile. Make sure everybody takes the time to do that. The next here is the personalization. So I uh, jump into there and that's where this is the personalization, meaning when you send an email or an invite for somebody to join the Realm app as a client, this is the email and this is the information that they're going to get. Uh, you can go in here and edit that yourself. If you send, if I sc scroll down, uh, if you're going to send a listing, I like changing this a little bit, listing for you to see, uh, change it up with how, what, however you communicate with your clients and your personality, uh, add some personality to it. And of course, of course, your signature at the bottom of all your emails, go in there and edit that, make sure all that information is correct. So when an email is sent from the system, whether it's a drip or you specifically send an email or, or a listing, uh, this is the signature that gets sent. So obviously have your TREB or your RICO name and along with realtor or your designation and your brokerage information and the phone number and any, any other information you want to show up. So I just have my URL, my website here, and that's what clients get to see. So take the time to do that. That's important. I know it takes a little bit of time at the beginning, but once you've got it set, it's set. You don't have to go back in here again. So <clears throat> the other cool thing here, we're going to quickly kick on account and this allows you to have your start page at a specific page. So I like having it on the dashboard. And if a client comes in, how do you want them to see it? Uh, they can change this as well. I can change what my default search is going to be. So I have a number of different searches in here and I just want it as default. And of course, set your time zone and you can change uh, the way you want this app to look from your perspective. Notifications, we're going to go to that next and I like this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I like this notification. So do I want a summary from all the chats that I'm sending? Do I want that sent to me? Well, I choose not to because I don't want to, I don't want to have an abundance of emails, but I can have, if I'm chatting with three or four people uh, throughout the day, the system will send you a summary and that's good, especially if you've got a, a hot market like we're in right now and you need to stay on top of your clients and, uh, and on top of the market. That's a good reminder at the end of the day to get that summary. And the difference between the two columns here, what is a push and what is an email? 
because the app, uh, the app should be loaded on your phone as things appear. So perhaps you have a search, um, you have a, a specific search that you're looking at. A push will send you a notification within the app. All right. An email, self-explanatory, you're going to get an email into your inbox. Those are the two differences. Some people choose to have a push and an email, whatever, however you feel comfortable, you do you. That's good. Uh, but you can have the system push uh, all the information to you. You can also have it set so the it's individual per client. And I'll show you that a little bit later. And what's nice about this is I can change this from a listing match search. I don't want to get those maybe all the time, or maybe I do. I can change this from daily to I never want to receive that, or my favorite, uh, real time. So as soon as a listing hit is submitted by another brokerage or a, you know another agent, and it and it and it fits the criteria that you're looking for. You're going to get a push notification in real time or an email in real time. And that, my friends, can make or break a, the day for you, uh, especially with a client. So use that, gauge it on, on your personal preferences. But there's lots and lots of different ways to have messages uh, sent to you, which is, which is great. So that is <clears throat> kind of everything we're going to talk about from a settings perspective. Take the time, that one time to go through through this part of the the website or the platform and have that all set up. Okay, so let's go home. Let's go back to the homepage and I'm going to show you what the homepage, uh, how to read the homepage and what it looks like. And I will guarantee you this, at least I will guarantee it 99.9999%. How's that of a guarantee? Uh, my homepage is going to look different than your homepage. And that, my friends, is an awesome, awesome thing. And here's why. First of all, you'll see right in the middle my recent listings that I've looked up. Uh, as I scroll down and we're looking at the middle of the page, you're going to see my searches. I have different style of searches in here. And then you're going to see different saved lists. I don't have the same list that you have. And if we do, we need to talk because that's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, it has the land registry information. I'll explain what all that is in just a moment. Now, on the left-hand side, you'll notice it shows some market stats. So New Market, uh, Stouffville, Georgina, these are the typical areas that I look up information the most. And the, the platform learns about my browsing habits, which is a good thing here. And it now knows that I want to see listings or information in these areas, New Market, Stouffville, and Georgina. In fact, that's where we have offices uh, for our brokerage. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And... Uh, all I'm doing is I'm just hovering over the this bar graph, and it's telling me, you'll see a number there in January, uh, there were 21 sales uh, in January uh, in New Market, not very many. And as I, sorry, that's by the week. I need to be very clear in here. This is by the week, uh, these stats. And as I scroll over, you'll see that number change. And you can see, of course, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's got the list price. You're average price and the medium price, which is the most important uh, number on here. I always go by medium and you can see that. And of course the list to sale ratio of, of the, of this time frame, and it dates back uh, into mid October. So those, that's one way to look up stats and we'll look up another way. I'll show you another way to look up stats as well. And on the far right hand side, these are the market areas that I, I want to keep a, uh, a handle of. So this will show me new listings in new market. And you can have a number of different areas in here. I have new market, uh, Stovall, Georgina, Stovall Commercial. So no new listings in Stovall Commercial. Uh, one new listing in Uxbridge. And you can see a handful of listings in Aurora as I scroll up. And if I just wanted to click uh, one of these listings, I would do that. I just hover over it. And it takes me right into uh, the listing here. <clears throat> and as that listing pops up, let's go through what a listing looks like. Okay, so the top here, obviously this, a lot of this is self-explanatory and the information is gonna show up in a different spot. Excuse me for a second. Okay. Uh, obviously we can see the price and if this property is new 
or uh, otherwise it'll say price change or SC sold conditionally. We'll have that information and that'll appear right here. Of course, taxes. See, all of this information is now in a different location and our MLS number. So now we know exactly where to look for this MLS number right underneath the pricing, which is really, really handy. And if I look onto the left-hand side, it tells me this is a detached bungalow, three plus two beds, three baths, and the rooms and the total spark, spark, uh, parking spots. And days on market now appears right here. So now that we know that, we can just zone in uh, specifically right to that now that we know where it is. You can see we've got some open houses coming up this weekend. And if I want to look at the pictures, I can click on this arrow right here and it'll just cycle through the pictures as I click through them. If I want to see them in a bigger format, I click the blue window here and that'll take me to the bigger format. And there's different ways I can look at the images all at once or in one uh, as individuals. So let's just close that and go back to the listing. As all listings should, there should be some attachments to it. So here's the attachments. You're going to find that. And these are all linkable, uh, clickable meaning. And if I wanted to see uh, what this information was, I would just click on this schedule and it opens up a new window just as it would in Treadstratus. And you're going to see the schedule there. So there's the schedule and or any other relevant information. So that's where you'll find the attachments. Now, the links. I really like uh, the links here. And one of the big things that I haven't mentioned yet is because Realm is owned by Terranet, you'll also recall Terranet owns Geo Warehouse. Geo Warehouse is where as we as realtors uh, retrieve all the information for legal descriptions and the current owners of the properties. Now these two companies are owned by Terranet. This information uh, comes together and they pull geo warehouse information into realm, which is outstanding. But there are times where we do want to click right into geo warehouse. And if we do this right here, it'll take us right into geo warehouse, just as it would Stratus. But I can tell you, we no longer need to do that. Uh, on a daily basis, that is. And and that's fantastic. All of this information is very self-explanatory. The directions, virtual tour, we can still view this in Stratus if we need to. Uh, web forms, if you're going to you're gonna be uh, creating an offer out of here, I'm going to click web forms. Or if you're using the new system, uh, you can click on SkySlope. And fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> now we get into the description of the property. So again, slightly different spot, but there's your description underneath the links. After that, we have the listing information. So listing information, we automatically go to here because we will always want some details. We want to see if this is the original list price. We want to see the contract date. We want to verify the taxes. So the taxes is also at the top. It's also here and what the tax year is right there. Uh, the other thing we may want to see is our seller landlord name and that, that information there. Uh, how to book appointments. And of course, we always look. We always look uh, to see what the cooperating commission is there. And the rest of this information, again, is all self-explanatory. Possession remarks you're going to find here. So this one looks to be uh, somewhat flexible. Uh, but that's where we're going to now look for that information, especially if we're looking at creating an offer. We want to know those uh, possession remarks. And is this owner occupied or not? It's, all that information is right here. As I scroll down, we've got our property information. And for some, I know this will be uh, very self-explanatory, but for others, uh, now you know where to look, right? This is good. There's our lot size. So the lot size doesn't appear at the top like it does in Stratus. You have to scroll a little bit uh, on the ways down to see that inform excuse me, see that information. Any features of the home? And now rooms, your room info is here. And I believe uh, Treb is making the decision, which is, I think, a fabulous one. Uh, I don't know the exact date, but soon, if not uh, very soon, we'll have to add in the room measurements uh, for all of our listings, which I think is a smart choice. Uh, very, very smart choice. As I keep scrolling down, here's our extras, our inclusions, exclusions, and of course, as most realtors do, we want to see what brokers remarks because we want to know if there is an offer presentation and there is on this property. Uh, should we attach any schedules uh, and all that relevant information to this specific listing? 
Now, here's what I like. We're going to keep scrolling because this is the part that uh, is in addition to uh, Realm and that Treb does not, sorry, that Stratus doesn't have. As I scroll down here, it's going to give me the property history right here, right on the same page. So we don't have to click through multiple pages and look up multiple information. I can see this property. The last listing that it had, of course, is this one. Now, there's some properties or there's a handful of properties on the market right now that were perhaps listed in the fall or early, early this winter. You're going to see that information here. And as long as there's an MLS ID, if I click this, it's going to pop up a new window and it's going to open up that specific listing, which I think is really, really cool. So we can go see this property sold for 816. Uh, and as I scroll down, we can find out when the home sold eight, or the date that it sold. And the closing date was in 2016 in, um, in May. May 30th. So now I have that information. I think that is so great because if I go back to the main listing here, all this information is very, very important to us. And if, there, if there's more info or more listings to look at, there's, there's, that's going to show you that, that info right there. This, as I said, land registry, this is being pulled in by, by, by Terranet and by Geo Warehouse. So all this information is being pulled in and that's that's very, very beneficial to us as buying agents if we're looking at this. Also as a listing agent, it'll pull that information in as we're doing the listing as well if we're doing the ad edit through here. And if I need more info, I can obviously get that through the system right here. If I wanted um, the parcel register, so the parcel register is to see if there's any liens on a property. Uh, usually there is because a mortgage is a lien. Now, not all homes have mortgages. I understand that, but that's that's where you would get that information. Of course, who's the listing uh, contracted with? There's that info right there. And it does have some mortgage features to it and some demographics Um down here as well. You might be scrolling along and you think to yourself, what other listings are similar? Well, they're going to pop up here and I can cycle through those as well. So this is going to be based on uh, value, size, and location. That's where the similar listings pops up there. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a few things. There's the, if you know exactly where you need to go at the very top, if I click the links up here, it's gonna take me directly to the link section right here. So I don't have to scroll. I can go, I can scroll up to the top again and hit that specific um, uh, link at the very top. Now, there's a couple other features on here that we're gonna we're gonna cover right now. And that is the contact details. I can message uh, Taylor, the listing agent, uh, right from here. If I were to click that, it's gonna pop up uh, the messaging app. Now. Here's what you need to know. I know not every agent is on Realm at this moment, so if you do message her, she might not get it through the app. Uh, that won't happen until probably later this year when everyone has to adopt Realm. Uh, use that. So if you're going to do that, uh, verify that she's using the system. Uh, you can click on our three dots here, and it's going to give you uh, her contact information. So that use that, and if you do find out she's on Realm, uh, use the Realm chat function as well. So this is great. And you might say, Garrett, this is awesome. Uh, what are these other functions up here? Well, one, I can just click the heart and that means I've liked this property and this is going to be in part of my liked properties now, not your clients, uh, mine. I can click the chat feature right here, which means I can start a chat uh, with any of my clients. And you'll notice at the bottom here, oh, let me just put in a client first, Bobby is one of my clients and <clears throat> hang on i got i gotta flip over to clients and there's by bob and what happens is uh great house if i spelled that correctly but that's okay i can hit send and this is going to send bob uh this this message with this listing, it's going to attach to this listing to this message, and I just sit, hit send, and that's going to show up in his app, which is really, really cool. So that's one way to share a listing. Now, the other way 
is by clicking the down arrow here, the blue button, and you can see I can email this listing, and that's going to just bring up our email uh, system through, and this looks very familiar, right? Uh, through Treb Stratus, it's very, very, it's, it's the exact same. And I can just type in any address there. They don't have to be already into the system. And the, uh, the really cool thing here is I can add a comment uh, right here and I can say, great house. And I do know that there is a offer date. I just don't remember when. Um, but if there is an offer date, I would put that right in here. And, and then when your client sees it, they are going to have that information. And I would just clip, I'm going to move my video window out of the way. And you can hit, see that send button. And this, this email will get sent to them with this listing, with that note. So what does that look like, Gare? Well... Here's what it looks like. I have, uh, I've already sent myself a, a email earlier and this, this is what the email looks like. Uh, there's the listing with the image attached. I did, it was on another home. There's the note that I messaged the client. Uh, this is a great home. And if I want to view that, uh, it goes exactly like this. And if you'll notice, as I said, it's branded to me. So there's the image that we uh, created when we set up our profile. There's all my information, uh, my how to contact me as well. And of course, this is a different listing, but there's all the client facing information with the photos, the price of the home and all the other relevant information that a client would want. So this is the client view, not the broker view. This is the client view of the listing. I think this is fantastic because now this listing or this information uh, becomes branded to you. So that's very, very handy by using that email function. If, when I show you the app, you're going to be able to text your client this listing link as well. Now, that's great. And I love it. And I'll show you that once we get to the app. Okay, let's move, let's move forward because we're we got lots to cover here. <clears throat> okay, next thing we're going to do is how to search properties. Not because it's, I think it's really important to see the listing and now we know where to look for our listings and, and how to view that information is really, really important. Now there's a few ways to search properties here. <clears throat> and I don't know about you, I'm very visual. So typically I search by the map and if I want to search by the map, I'm going to click this big button right in the middle that says search. It's going to tell, take me right into the map view of all of Ontario. And there's no criteria in here. If you see on the left-hand side, you'll, it'll always bring back 10,000 results. There's, there's probably many, many more results uh, than that. But it always brings up the whole map of Ontario. And then just like any other map, if I click a spot on the map, I can move it around. Or if I double-click in areas, I can zoom in. And, and the like. So I'm going to cover that in just a minute. Let's go back here because this does allow you from the dashboard to set some criteria. So if I were to click this, I can do a few things. <clears throat> I can start typing in a uh, new market and it's going to give me a uh, new market as a function or a feature. And I can start, if you look here, it's giving me the, the municipality or the area of York York region, new market. I can look up all the homes in new market, or if I just know the specific area, I can do Bristol, London, and then perhaps that's where I want to look. And I'm going to do that. I'm just going to click Bristol, London. And now that search criteria is gone to, it will only view Bristol, London. If I hit search. Now let's say I want to make sure that I'm looking at uh, detached homes. So I'm going to click on freehold, make sure that our detached is selected and click done. And I want to make sure that I'm looking up. It will always default to for sale and available. If you need to change that to lease, you would simply click that and that would highlight that. You have to unhighlight sale. So let's do that. That's probably enough of criteria. Of course, the price would be self-explanatory. I don't need to get into that. <laughs> click the search button and you'll see the map gets drawn or the border gets drawn around the Bristol, London area, which We'll, right now, we need listings, my friends. Can you not tell? Uh, there's only four in here that are detached homes, and you can see them right here. Now, you might say to yourself, well, this is great, Gare. <clears throat> 
how can I fine tune this a little bit? So I'm actually going to clear the areas just so I can play with the filters a little bit. So how do I do that? There's the big clear button and it'll still remain in this area. Yet it'll now bring in all the listings that are viewable by the map. So there's 33 listings viewable by the map. If I click the zoom out button, you're going to see uh, more listings come up and I can move that map around. And now we're probably at 80 some odd listings, 75 listings. But again, we are, are <clears throat> looking at first sale available and <clears throat> I'm going to change that back to detached. Now let's say I want to play around with the more filters. I, I can see that here and I, there's the generic style. So again, things are in a little bit different spot here, but that's where you can change all that. I'm not going to get into all this specifics here because you guys are familiar with that, with your abstratus. I know you are. Well, it's a beautiful day out, but let's make sure that the home has central air and we certainly wanted to make sure that happens. So that went down to 54 listings. And perhaps I'm looking at a home and I need a, I need multiple kitchens, perhaps uh, maybe one in the basement so I can add two kitchens there. And now we have a number of homes. Now we've taken it down to, to 12. I hit, <clears throat> I hit done here and it'll show me the listings on the left-hand side or in the map view. Now, here's something really cool, uh, really quickly. If I don't like this particular view, I like looking at things a little bit differently. I can click layout and I can change this to uh, any one of these uh, views and, and perhaps you're more familiar with looking things in a table format. Uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, I know a lot of people still like to look at listings this way. You have your search criteria on your left. You can actually close this so you're only looking at that search criteria. So, excuse me, the the uh, table view. Uh, you recall me saying that I am visual, so I like looking at the map, and that's how you do that. Fantastic. Now, you might say to yourself, um, <clears throat> this is a great search. I want to save this search. Click the button, hit save search, and you can save that for yourself or for a client. That's how you do that. Uh, very, very easily done there. Okay, let's let's look at map layers now that we're here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear uh, the, the search. And right here we have something called map layers, which is something that I think is really, really cool. By default, it's on parcel fabric. What is that? That's just a fancy way of saying uh, land registry information. And if I keep zooming in, in a moment here, you're going to see all the lot lines appear. So that's for every lot line in all of Ontario. And if I click on one, it's going to give me the information for that particular property. So 163 Septone. And if uh, let's click on another one. Uh, well, let's just see, because if this property sold on chart, no, if it's sold on a trial real estate board, it'll also have that listing information. So let's just try another one. Um, <clears throat> and see if that information does does appear. So this was 2005. Uh, it does, though, have that listing from 2005. I would simply click that MLS number, that listing would appear. So that's really, really beneficial because uh, you sometimes you're at a home and you want this information. This is a great way, without getting into your warehouse, uh, to use that, that map layer and get that info. Okay, changing map layers. <clears throat> Let's do that. If I don't want the, if I don't want any particular map layer, I just uncheck it and you'll see that black border is now gone and, and that becomes cool. Now, if you're like me and you're doing a showing and a client asks you, Hey, if we went, if we purchased this home, what school would my kids go to? I, I don't know if I would recall that information. I actually don't retain that information. That's not something that I focus on, but I know in my pocket, on my phone, I now have that information because I would just click on the map layer and click schools. And now all of a sudden, the schools in this area are going to appear. All I have to do is zoom out a little bit. 
And you'll see, I believe it's blue balloons that will show up here in just a moment with all the schools. So you can fine tune this a little bit. You can click the school button at the top right corner and you can change it from public to Catholic or all. Right now it's defaulted to public. If I click on this right, this school right here, I think this is a high school. Uh, this is Denison. So that shaded area is now the catchment for that high school. How awesome is that? You no longer have to memorize uh, this local area by the schools. You just simply click on that, and that becomes uh, your new your new walking encyclopedia. If I changed it to the public school, there's the catchment for that public school, which is pretty awesome. So there, there's the school function. And, and again, I don't retain that information. Okay, so let's change the map layer. This is something really, really good. We're going to change it to the turnover rate. And I, and because I coach a lot of agents, a lot of agents come to me and say, Gare, I want to know the turnover rate. Or they're talking about creating a farm. They want to create a new farming area, meaning an area where they can go uh, take, take market share in. And I say, that's great. What's the turnover rate? And now I have that by clicking the map area and the redder the area, the higher the turnover rate. Cause I don't want to start farming or knocking on doors or flyering an area that has a very, very low turnover rate. Right. And I want to work on an area that has a very high turnover rate. I want a better chance and I want to increase my chances of getting those listings. Now you can see that by using the map layer. So there's a few areas in here and this will date back to the last over the last 12 months, uh, this area, the North, West corner of Young Street and Davis in Newmarket. If I click that, you can see 4.83. If I click that, it gives me uh, the number of sales in that area over the last year, which is great. Some areas are far less than that. If I clicked on <clears throat> an area down here, it was 3.4. So half the sales. I have half the chance of getting a listing there. So use use that. Uh, to your advantage, there's here one at 2.55, only 19 sales. So use that to your advantage uh, when you're looking at map layers. It also has map layers for uh, the growth or the sale price. We won't just get into that just now, but that's where you would find that. If I don't want that on, I just simply turn it off. And there's other map layers in here, like the communities. Perhaps you're looking up a certain area and you're not exactly sure of the specific community. Uh, that's how you would turn that on and off, which is pretty cool. Very good. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to uh, the registry information, which I think is is very, very cool. So you saw there from a map layer perspective where we can get that information. Uh, the other information, the other way to do that here is by going to the land registry uh, button. And, and what I'm looking at here is... First of all, I want to know what area or what uh, region that I'm looking in, and I'm going to click on York Region, and perhaps I want to look up the name, and we'll, we'll keep it really simple. I can either put in a last name and or the specific street name, and if I click Smith, we're probably going to see a lot of them. There you go. And so these are the owners with the last name Smith, but if you knew that you were looking for John Smith at nine kilo prom in Georgina, uh, you would click that and it would provide you that land registry information. Very, very cool uh, to have that right within realm. So you don't have to bounce back and forth between jail warehouse. And it is really fast, really, really fast. So that's very, very beneficial as well. Okay. Let's look at market stats. Uh, let's go back into our search and I'm going to show you a really cool way to look at market stats. And perhaps I should have done this a moment or two ago, but that's okay. We're going to uh, we're going to pull up uh, new market here. So I hit location, and I know that I'm just I don't need to put in the area. I can just jump right into new market and start just start typing in here new market, and it's going to draw me the map of new market. And from here. I can start looking up some stats. And so there's there's our, our border of new market. And on the left-hand side, you're going to see market insights. And check this out. As soon as I click that, a new window pops up with some market insights, which is super, super cool. So this is for the last 30 days. 
I can see that we've had 96.5% ass sale ratio. Our average price is $1 million. And it looks like we're seeing 70% of the listings uh, sold. So, so we need more inventory. And I can look at the chart here. And we've seen a number of new listings over the last little while, but we need more. Uh, perhaps I want to see total sales. So there's our total sales over the last uh, several several months uh, by the week. I can keep changing this to uh, let's look at the medium. Uh, let's look at medium medium sale price. Here we go. Where is it? Medium sale price. Uh, there's all our numbers in there, and then I can do some mid month reporting. So that that becomes really easy. I just select a new market and boom, uh, it's right there. There's the other feature here, which is the analytics. So let's click that and see what information that provides us. Very similar to what we looked at on our homepage or our dashboard at the beginning, but now we can change the time frame on this. So there's our listings total. And if you want to see just what happened last week in new market, uh, that information will, is there. It won't show up in a bar graph, but there was just 11 solds uh, last week. And if I wanted to be very specific here, I could have, I could change it to detached or to semis or to uh, towns, if you will, or condos. And it'll go back uh, to the max of, uh, I think it goes back to 1992, this information. Now, when you do that, give it some time. There it is, because it does pull in a lot of information. Uh, 2004, it's going back to, and there's all that information dating way back when, which is, which is really cool. I can change this to the, see the average sale price. Let's do medium sale price, um, over the last, uh, many, many years. Again, give, give it some time. That system will change. There it is. So look at that. You might want to do a screen capture of that and send it to your clients just to see the market change over the years. But that's pretty cool. That gives you some real true market intel. And again, we can change this just to the last six months pretty quickly. And then boom, there you have it. So, so that information, look how fast we're able to pull that information up. I love it. I love it. There are some other ways to pull up market stats, but from that perspective, uh, as we educate ourselves, I think that's really, really important uh, to have that info. Uh, you can do that as well. I know there's a way uh, like people like doing it a little bit differently in Treb Stratus. You can do that by clicking the dice and going into the sold stats here. I should also mention if I wanted to include uh, other areas in here, I can do that. If I wanted to include uh, Aurora in here, I can do that or, or a community uh, right in Aurora. Uh, I can do that as well. And you're going to see the map get drawn for Aurora. And if I click the analytics, you're going to see both cities or, uh, or both areas provide that information. The system's going to provide that information as well. There you have it. Good stuff. Okay. Let's go back to our dice. And I know some people like looking at the sold stats uh, this way. They like seeing it. Uh, in a bar graph. So there's my two areas. It copied my two areas. And if I were to click into new market, uh, it gives me the, the um, breakdown of how these homes sold. So that's how we would get that information uh, that way. A lot, a lot of people use this uh, within Treb Stratus. And uh, that's how you would get that information, which is beneficial. Okay, let's back out of here. We got lots to cover and still a short amount of time. Okay. So we've done uh, the map layer. We looked at the stats, land registry, the listing page, the search. And I promised you I would show you uh, how to use the phone. And we're going to do that. So if you haven't downloaded the app, go download the app, whether it's in uh, the Apple um, store or the Google store. You can download that. It's Realm, R-E-A-L-M-M-L-P, I believe is it is. And uh, you'll be able to launch the app from from your phone and I love it. I use the app daily and I'm going to share my screen and hope there's my phone and realm icon. And because I've already logged into it a few days ago, it just logs me right in. See, there you have it. And you know, it looks very similar, uh, exactly the same as you would see, um, <clears throat> as you would see from the desktop version. So I'm just scrolling with my thumb. I'm just scrolling up. There's the new listings for the different areas and as I scroll down, there's the market stats. And if I highlight with my finger over the um, over the bar graph, it has all that information. 
and uh, I absolutely love it. The app is incredibly fast. Of course, it has all the same functions. If I click the dice at the top, all the same links. So we don't need to go into all those links, but it has all that information there. Has my searches. So here's a search uh, for for always interest sake. I like following power of sale searches. Now I know this isn't the best way to do it, but I have a, a search criteria based on power of sales and who's the seller. And those are all the searches. If you see here, it pulls up the listings um, in an image view and I can change the way I wanna see that. Uh, perhaps at the bottom there, you see results, map and filters. Perhaps I wanna see, right now it's showing the results. If I want to see it in map view, I certainly, I just click the map view and those are all the listings are on the Toronto real estate board for the map view. If I want to see what my filters are, I click the filters and you can set what your filters are for this particular search. And I just have that set based on the seller landlord name. That's how we see that. Now, again, it has the home button, the bottom right, or the realm logo at the top left. That'll always take you back to the dashboard. Okay, now I want to make sure that you see how this program uh, interacts with um, your clients and when you're looking at listings. And we're going to do a couple of things. So if I just want to look up any old list, if I want to go back to New Market, Aurora area, or even Martin, where it doesn't matter, I'm going to click the bottom left-hand magnifying glass, and that's going to take me into, um, first of all, I got I to gotta clear my filters so what the system does, if you've looked at a search recently, it'll always remember that search. So I'm just going to hit reset to default and uh, hit the magnifying glass here. And that will, I got to hit done. And, and uh, that'll always take me back out. Of course, it's not happening at this moment. Hit clear, hit done. And it's still not working. What's, what's we doing here? Oh, I know what's happening here. Clear, done. And let me hit the map. And it's just looking up those. There's my problem. My problem was I was zoomed in too far to see all of that because I had previously gone in here. So let me back up. That was all on me, my friends, wasn't the app. And that's why it's important to know that how the app responds. Because I went in there earlier today, I zoomed very close in on a specific area. So it only showed me two listings. Now, if I go back to that, I see here 163 listings, but I'm going to look at the map and I'm gonna see where that map was, and it was zoomed right into some place in Richmond Hill. But look how fast this is all populating. I love it, and I'm just moving this map around with my thumb, and perhaps I wanna zoom in on an area here in uh, Newmarket, and there's a listing there that I wanna choose, so this one at 1 1.5, I'm, I'm just gonna highlight that, click it with my finger, click it once more with my finger, and there's the listing. Uh, there's arrows that show up for the images and I can just click through those images and I just keep clicking and I see this listing and all that same information that we would have from the desktop is available uh, through the through the app as well. And uh, there's your attachments, there's all your links. As, as I keep scrolling and scrolling, it has all the exact same information, which is great. And even, even the recent sales of the property, that information is there. And it, again, if it had been listed with TREB, whether it's for sale or for lease, uh, you have that information. I could just click that and it's, it's going to go. And you might say, well, Gare, this is awesome. I want to send this listing to a client. Top right-hand corner, there's your blue button. Click that blue button and you can click chat where it's going to share it within the chat program of Realm. Uh, you can hit suggest, so it's going to suggest it to your clients. I'm going to send it specifically to them as like a chat would. Or you can hit uh, share, and when you see the share, you can now share this through through many, many different ways. And I've just shared this through, um, I shared it earlier uh, with myself, <laughs> And you're going to see what that looks like. I sent it through a text message, just through uh, iMessage. And this is what it looks like right here. Hang on a second. This is what it looks like. That's what it appears like when you send it as a text message. It appears to my, my client uh, just like this. And if I click on that link, again, it's branded to me. This is a different listing, so I wanted to make sure that uh, we I did this quickly for you. But there's the buyer or the client view of what 
your listing or what this link is going to so you don't have to have the app it doesn't open it in the app it opens up in a web browser again it's branded to me i think this is fantastic let's go back to the to the realm app and the one thing the the hack that i'm going to give you is as as you saw me zoom in and out when i zoom in and out and i get close enough you see all the lot lines or the parcel fabric and i gotta tell you by default, the parcel fabric is on. I've talked to the developers at Realm. They need to leave a map layer on based on the system parameters. And sometimes what happens as I'm moving this around, I might click on a lot that I don't want to open up, okay? So stay with me. How you change that is, and you need to do this every time, but it's okay. Once you, once you do it once, you're, you're fine. Uh, click on the map layers and uncheck that. So now the map layers, all the map layers are turned off. So if you don't want to see the, the par parcel fabric, that is something you need to do every time at the moment. That's okay. Uh, that's how you do it. Now I can just move this around with my thumb and, uh, and, and then I don't have that feature popping up. Very, very cool. This also uh, has all the filters in it so I can look up by area. If I wanted to, I can hit municipality, search by new market, pull that in and uh, close this, close this. Oops. Yeah. New market hit done. And now it's going to bring up that new market location, which is pretty cool. All the same functions that we have on the desktop are, are here on the map. And now I have a shape. Uh, you'll see remove shapes in the top right hand corner, uh, hit remove and it'll default back to the map of Ontario. But the app, my friends, is outstanding. I can be anywhere. As long as I have an internet connection, I can be anywhere. And in fact, I can tell you that when I was halfway around the world, I went to the World Cup last year in Qatar, I thought to myself, I wonder what the Toronto real estate market is like. And I clicked on the app, opened it up, and it worked just as fast as it's working here. And I was able to be... Uh, I was able to be halfway around the world and still look up information on the Toronto Real Estate Board. So, so there you have it, my friends. Uh, lots of information, and uh, that is that is Realm from a very high level view. There's there is lots to learn, and and with that, uh, that this is what I'm most excited about is I do have a Realm uh, mini course. Actually, it's not a mini course. It's about 13 to 14 short videos going into very deep detail of what uh, Realm or how to use Realm and it's at a much slower pace, how to set up your profile, how to load listings, how to create searches for your clients, how to make the best use of Realm so you do become that early adopter. And I'll show you what, uh, I'll show you what the system looks like um, in just a second here. And here we are. Uh, this is this is all the videos that you're gonna get uh, when you subscribe to the to the to the course. And there's a lot, like I said, how to navigate, set up your profile, layouts, and there's there's even more layouts that we didn't talk about today. The search, we go into very deep detail, uh, print listings, get directions, your bonus, and 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 some other map layers there. Uh, of course, create contacts and messaging your clients. We go into deep detail about that. The mobile app, deep detail about that. And of course, we mentioned adding listings. Uh, many, 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 many people are taking this right now and are loving it because they can go at their own pace and they can also refresh back to it because you don't need all this information at once, but you do need it when you need it, if you know what I mean become that early adopter. And here's what I can tell you. That course does retail for $297. It's a one-time fee, so $297. And what if you use this coupon, uh, Realm97, it will be yours uh, for $97. You have to use it by the end of April 15th. And as I said, many, many people have. I do go into very deep detail as I've shown you. And it has a much slower pace and cadence to it. Pause it, rewind it, do whatever you want with it. But uh, it would be uh, very beneficial to your clients to jump on something like this. Uh, make sure you're ahead of the curve. As we talked about at the beginning of the, the call, the top producers that I help coach and mentor right across Canada they're not the ones to sit behind and wait for others to do it. They get out in front 
and and become that early adopter. So that's what I can tell you today. Become that early adopter. Get out in front. Don't wait until the fall when we have to change and everyone's scrambling on how to learn it and being frustrated. Uh, use the time that we have today to get way out in front. Get your clients on the app as well, as I mentioned, uh, they have because we have the sole data on it. Use the course to your benefit. $97 is a great, great opportunity for you to become that early adopter and get ahead of the curve. My friends, I appreciate you spending uh, the time with me here today. Uh, if you have questions, uh, do reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any which way I can. But thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see everybody on our next video. Bye for now.